Yesterday I spent a good part of the day filming the uh, differential repair on the 110 that's up on my lift. The only thing was, it was so dark when it came out, you couldn't see what the hell I was doing. So, we're going to remedy that today. So yesterday I spent a good part of the day under this car doing this differential. Not too bad, we've done them before, but I don't particularly like doing them on the vehicle. You can probably see what my setup is here. Nightmare. Uh, I've got a video of trying to get the, one of the bolts out of the flange that had snapped off. I mean, it had snapped off, the head had snapped off, leaving the shaft inside the flange. That was a nightmare. And then I had problems with the diff itself. I got the diff out no problem at all. But what happened, sorry my squeaky chairs, squeaky. Um, there was a clunking inside the differential, inside the spider gears or whatever you want to call them. And uh, I fixed that, but the shims I got, the standard shims, made it too tight. So by playing around with some other bits and pieces of shims, I managed to get that right. And I'll show you my setup in a minute that I have in the vice. But when I put it back on, oh wait a minute, before I did that, that's why the video didn't come out, uh, I did the pinion oil seal. Now th this is really important and I really wanted to film this and it didn't come out too well so this is why I'm going to do it again with an axle that's on the bench. So here we are on the bench with the axle project. Now before we start I want to say a big thank you to somebody who sent me a bottle of Glen Scotia uh, whiskey for my birthday. I don't know who it was but it came by uh, the local liquor shop here that was sent by a courier. So many thanks for that. I, I, I really uh, sort of needed it yesterday after wasting my time. So what we're going to do today, we're going to change the seal. We're going to change the seal because we can. It's here. Why not do it? Because they always bloody leak, don't they? Now at the same time, we're going to check the hose, the breather hose, to make sure it's not blocked. This axle had a, it was pretty good. The bearings were a bit nasty on the crown, on the crown wheel itself. So I'm going to change those. But the interior bearings were good. But at the same time we're taking this out, we can check the bearings in here to see if they're all right and they haven't picked up. They feel okay, but you can never tell. And like I said, while you're here, let's do it. Now the thing about this is, the, the diffs out of the, the differential unit itself is out of the casing so I can then pop this out really easy so it'll be a little bit different for you working under the car but the technique's exactly the same so what we're going to do, we'll move that box up right? first of all before we do anything we're going to get a pair of goggles and we're going to put a mark on the pinion itself and on the nut and on the flange the flange is not really important, but I think when you see, we'll have a, we can hit it anyway. So I'll, I'll put my uh, glasses on, and we'll get. It. And that's all it needs. Just so a, just a wee mark here, here, and here. Keep them all in line. Got it. That was easy, wasn't it? So the next thing, I'm going to set up my tool to take the flange off. So you're going to ask yourself, why did I mark it with a cut? Why didn't I use a crayon or centre punch or something like that? Well, the, the shafts are usually a little bit hard, so the punch mark wouldn't really work. And um, crayon, it will just rub off. I've done it before with a marker pen, so I put a little niche in it. But why are we doing that? Well. We're not going to replace the crush sleeve. We're going to leave it as it is. We might have to adjust it a little bit, with a little bit of tension, but that's all. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I've got the advantage of having no differential in there, just the pinion. Now, we're going to get a hold of a tiny quarter inch drive, um, I don't want to call these, beam torque wrench. 
Uh, you can see all the adapters I've put in there because I want a 32 millimeter socket on there. But this measures our Newton meters from one from zero to nine. See, that's really good, isn't it? Now, when you set these flanges up, tighten them down and set the the crush sleeve, it should be between two and four Newton meters to turn. And this one is one. And that's with the ceiling. So we've got a long way to go. You can see now, we've got to get the nut off. Now we've measured it, we're going to take the nut off. And to get the nut off, we're simply going to use the airline and the uh, impact gun to get it back again. 32 millimeter socket and this little tool here. You really need something to hold that flange because you will never hold it with your fingers. And it's not really wise to hold it with like vice grips or anything like that. All this was, was a flange off a gearbox I think it was. And I got JP to turn it down and then I just welded it onto a tube. It's really easy because the bolt pattern's exactly the same. Full reverse. You could do that by hand I suppose. Not that bad. And that's the last time we'll use that. The next time we'll to tighten it we'll do it by hand. So we're going to take that off because we don't need that anymore. We're going to try and get this flange off. Now put your thumb over the end because, uh, oh well look, no need, it just dropped off, look. Look at this. And, there we go. and you can probably see on here the extent of wear. You can see just here this shiny bit, that's where the seal was running. And this looks like, to me, a leather seal. The old leather seal, so it's a good job we changed it because they don't last forever. And there's the pinion. We're going to put that in the parts cleaner, clean off all that goo. But the bearing and the teeth look spectacular, so no problems there. I'll just put that in the parts cleaner now to get the seal out. One of the most recommended tools, I did away with one of these, I did without one of these for many years, is one of these seal pullers. They're absolutely excellent. What should we make a mess of this? We're going to be fitting a rubber seal. Great mate. So, so what? Well, there's more to it than that. Because I'm going to clean the up, I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to come back and show you. So I give this a bit of a sandblast, and you notice I put an old type of uh, hose clip on there to protect the surface where the uh, seal ran. So there is a there's a couple of marks on it. So what we might do is use this for setup and then go and take it down to JP because we have to do some machining on this and I'm going to show you why and this is why I've cleaned it up. Because this seal has a lip here and this fits into here eventually like that. Now there's two different types. And this is where you can catch a crab, because they do the same job, but usually you can buy a flange and a seal together. But mixing and matching them up is not a good idea because when you come to buy, when you come to use these old seals, uh, these new seals, sorry, you see they've got a very pronounced like a dust shield on here. Well, this is where we get into trouble because when we put this seal on here, this when it gets into its place will catch on this rim here. So we've got to get that turned down and uh, make it fit, make sure it's going to fit because when I had the other one on uh, and I just put it on temporarily this was this was tight so this front flange it goes uh, 
on the front nose of this housing here. You'll see in a minute what, I was, what I'm trying to get at. So what I'm going to do now, I've already shown you that so you don't need to see that anymore. I'm going to see if there's a paper seal in the front of here. I'm going to try and get it out. Um, and then we're going to clean, clean all this lot out. So let's have a zoom in of this bearing race. And maybe I can show you. Can you see that? Can you see all those rings around here? Like the rings of Saturn. Um, they feel okay, but I don't think they are okay, so we'll, uh, we'll replace that bearing. I'm very tempted to replace all the lot, really. Because people have asked me, what does a good bearing look like and what does a bad bearing look like? Well, this is a bearing I've just taken out. And you can see it's got a... Oh, I'm going to hold the bloody thing. You can see it's got like a grey sheen to it. It's not shiny. When we look at this one here, it's, it's still not so bad. It's pretty good actually. We could use this one again. But look at it, see if there's any shininess on the bearings. If they're shiny, well, we'll just leave them. Now I can, and I'm thinking I might as well change the lot. There's only four bearings in the bloody axle. And I have to change the diff ones. I think what's happened is it's picked up from rust in this axle. I really do. I think it's picked up rust, got mixed up with the oil and started to pit things. It's not damage through uh, chipping metal or anything like that. I think on the Spanish 110, one of the bearings had actually started to collapse. But anyway, that's that. So, um, I think I'll change both sets of bearings. Now, the thing is about this job is that if we keep the original shim on the original pinion, we shouldn't have to reset the pinion height. See? We, you know, by shimming it, we won't have to calculate that, so it should be right. We can check it later on another video, but we don't really need to do that. The idea of today's video is to do the same. So I'm going to knock these bearings out and we'll come back. So I just changed the bearings and I'll show you the difference I was talking about in the bearings. You can see this is a brand new one. You can see how nice and shiny it is. But this one's got little ripples in it and when I got the, the outer race off, you can see what I saw, it was not very good. So if in doubt, take it out. So now what we're gonna do is put the bearing in and the dust shield in. And then we're going to get a new paper washer, because there wasn't one in it before. And we're going to put some sealer on this. I'm just putting a little bit of Hylomar on it, just to soften it up and make it seal better. We'll put the seal in. Like I say, it wasn't in before. And now we're going to take our seal, and this is the best trick I can show you, because what happened to me the other day when I was doing this axle on the car, I forgot to put some some uh, Vaseline on the back of the seal. I'm just going to blow that off. There's a bit of dust on it. Second. Right. I forgot to put some Vaseline on the seal. Not not on the lips, but on the spring. You see the spring? If you tap these in, there's a good chance the spring comes off. Ask me how I know that. They're, they are not held on very much at all. So a bit of Vaseline and a little bit in the lip as well. All right, then we're gonna knock it in. Now I have here a tool that is perfect. And you know, if you've got a mate who's got some woodworking tools, you can knock something like this up from a bit of hardwood it's going to be the perfect thing for putting the seal in. However, if you're doing this on the car, you'd have to drill a hole in the middle to accommodate for the shaft. But we're not going to do that. Let me get out of that and just sort of knock it in. Just like that. Not like that. Like that. 
and that's all it takes. And the spring didn't come off, which is nice. That's a nice seal around there. It's good. And then we're going to put this back on and uh, we'll tell you about the flange. Right, so this is the next day. I just got back from JP and um, he machined off this piece here and radiused here. But when we came to clean it, we just put, a, not a cut, but we just looked at it a little bit and there's a groove here. We thought it was just a rust mark. So what he's going to do is going to, we're going to take this one back and he's going to put a what he, what he calls a speedy sleeve on it, but it's not really a speedy sleeve. He makes them himself. Um, you might not be able to see this one is didn't. If you look very carefully here, he makes a sleeve, machines this down, and then heats it in his little oven till this sleeve sh and, and it shrinks on, and then he machines it back down to size. Now, I know it's a mess about, but like I say, here in Canada, we just can't go down the local corner shop and buy one or a scrapyard. But it, re it, it salvages them. And you can perhaps see now what I was saying about, there's, the, there's a seal. It's not the seal, because I've already got it in. But when you put this in, um, this finishes about here. You see what I mean? So now it'll go all the way. So I'm going to fit that right now. So this is the next day again, because I had a lot of problems yesterday. But... Just to recap, uh, JP put a speedy sleeve on this uh, pinion here and it's really nice. Now, one thing I'm just to finish this video off is that this isn't the original flange for here. This is another flange. Now, was there a difference between this one and the old one? Because if we zoom in and we look at the, f the marks on the pinion and on the nut, you'll find out they don't correspond. Yet, we put the gauge on the uh, and check check the tension on that, and that is two. That's showing two newton meters to turn that. Now in the book it says three to four. Well, I don't know about that because this is just nice. Oh, I wouldn't really like to put more tension on it than that. Weird, isn't it? So anyway, that's how to do it. If you put the seal in, just remember to put some Vaseline on it when you knock it in. Don't knock the seal off, otherwise I was lucky with this one because I could knock the seal out from the other side because the diff was out. Um, yeah, just pay attention for that. Now again, I, it's easy to set up this pinion seal and things like this when the diff's out. But for you guys at home getting the diff out, it's going to be a real pain. So this is what I'm saying. Mark it up. If it's got the original flange on, the original pinion, mark it up and you should be okay. Mm -hmm.